From today, Australians aged over 18 years can get Moderna's Omicron-specific booster vaccine. The shot comprises vaccines against the original SARS virus and the BA1 Omicron sub-variant. Here to tell us more is Dr Norman Swan, the host of the Health Report on RN and of the Coronacast podcast. Hi there, Norman. Hi. So who should and who can get this jab? Well, basically anybody who's eligible for a third or fourth dose uh, is eligible. And the, it's called a bivalent vaccine because, as you say, it's got the original virus or the genetic message for the antibody response and the genetic message for BA1, which is the first of the Omicron subvariants. Mm. And, yep, there's 30% of Australians, well, 28% of Australians eligible for a third dose, much less a fourth dose, haven't had it. That's a lot of people. So go out and get it and get the bivalent one, and that will give you good coverage against the... Yeah. Omicron family, not bad against four and five, even though it's one, BA1. And BA5 is still the dominant variant that's around the world. There are subvariants, some other variants circulating, um, and one of those might break through, and it may or may not be helped by this new vaccine. But in what we know now, it's the one to have. So if, if you haven't had your third or your fourth dose, you're best off asking for this one specifically yeah, yeah. rather than the and, old ones. You know, my, my basic maths might be wrong, but you can't have your fourth until you've had the third. That's true. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you know, it's amazing. <laughs> Nobel Prize in that one. So as you were saying that um, this jab is uh, comprises the original SARS virus and the BA1 Omicron subvariant, it sounds like we're still playing catch up to this virus. Because there we have are. been other subvariants since the BA1. We you? are, and there's still there are one or two subvariants sitting there, even within the Omicron family, that look as if they're quite immune evasive and may not be as well covered by the vaccine, um, even the bivalent vaccine as the um, a, 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 as the current BA5 is. Mm. But as I say, if you were to throw the dice statistically and you were to get another infection, it's much more likely to be a BA5. Than, um, than anything else at the moment. So yes, we are playing catch up and um, we, are, we will stop playing catch up when they've developed, if indeed they're able to, a vaccine that covers all future variants. In other words, they've got to the spot on the spike, that spike that attaches to our, our respiratory tract that doesn't change between variants. And Doherty Institute thinks they might have got a, ver you know, a, a better one to do that, others are, are talking about the same thing, or a nasal vaccine which protects our airways yeah. in the first place. And there are, I think, about 100 nasal vaccines under, under study. What's the latest with case numbers, uh, both here and overseas? Our case numbers continue to be in, the, in a trough. Um, we're just starting to see an uptick in the European countries. And it's really hard to tell at the moment because globally, testing's in a mess and we're really not sure how much is around. We look at hospitalizations, hospitalizations are fairly stable at the moment. There's a disconnect with deaths, um, that there, there, there are some people who are dying who are not getting into hospital. So there's not an inevitable straight line between hospitalization and deaths. So we've just got to watch carefully, but there is an uptick going on in Europe, which probably means we'll see an uptick as well. Mm -hmm sometime before Christmas, whether or not it's going to be a new variant or more BA5 for people who haven't been previously infected. But previous BA5 infection, there's a new study out which suggests that if you've had BA4 or BA5, it doesn't confer you complete protection against another BA4 or BA5 infection. Um, so you could get another BA5. Okay. Uh, on the health report later, you're looking at the success of robotic surgery for prostate cancer. It's been hugely controversial as to whether or not this very expensive surgery is worth the money and the effort. Um, and urologists have been claiming that it protects against um, side effects like erectile dysfunction, uh, incontinence and so on. Um, but the, and that's highly debatable whether it does. But this latest research, which comes out of a Victorian registry where the, regist the Victorian urologists have registered their results from robotic surgery compared to previous surgery, they do seem to be getting what's called better margins. In other words, the robotic surgery does seem to be removing the cancer more completely, which is good news. The key question is, the, is public hospitals. Robot, robots are dominantly in private hospitals. Um, and they are in some states increasingly in, in public hospitals, but the extent to which public hospitals are going to be able to afford to install them. Mm. You can hear more on the health report tonight at 5.30 on okay. RN. Thanks, Norman.